Well, uh, let me get into the, uh, the my outline here, and, and like I said, as we go, I'll give you some ideas of, of what people, other people are, how other people are using these kind of tools, like Facebook or anything else. And 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 also, I, I'm I'm kind of looking at when I say you know video for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like I'm kind of grouping things together. Right. Um, there's there's kind of a grouping of like these autoplay videos. Like if you notice, like on Facebook, you scroll through and videos are automatically playing on your phone on your desktop, right? Um, like the first few seconds start playing as you as you go through the news feed. Um, like yeah. uh, like let's see, so you go through. Yeah. I noticed I noticed that I put a like this like like this is automatically playing. That's how their videos are kind of uh, uh, done on here. And we'll get into like why that is and, and you know kind of why why that's important. Um, I, I noticed um, I downloaded a pro uh, an iCloud program to my HP, mm -hmm. and whenever I take a picture, it shows up mm -hmm. on my iPad and my HP. Mm -hmm. laptop. Yeah, I'll sync it up. Yeah. Right. So. So it gives you a lot of the advantages right. as if you had a Mac, so at least you can manage things a little better. Right. right. So no, that's that's absolutely fine, but. Um, so we're going to touch on that. I want to touch on what, what you could do with streaming video. So I don't know if you have any events or anything that, around that that, that mm -hmm. you'd want to use that with. But I'll give you some samples. And again, it might spark some, some interest, something that you could do. Um, uh, as well as, you know, touching on like YouTube and, and why would you use YouTube for something when there's all this other stuff. And, and then a little bit of even Snapchat's kind of a big thing. So I was planning to talk about that a little bit too. Right. Um, you know. We'll we'll take a look at it. I don't know as much you'd want to get into, but it's kind of it's still kind of curious to take a look at it and see how how people are using it these days. You know, uh, the the interesting ways that people are kind of communicating with video. So, like I said, we'll start off with auto video. You know, kind of you know as I said, as you scroll through Facebook, you see let's see where was that one? So is this Facebook? Right? This is yeah. this is my Facebook feed. So I have a wonderful I have a wonderful collection of. Uh, Friends, family, and pro wrestlers on here, so I have a really yeah, curious. So this is a news feed. This is the news feed. When you go there's, to Facebook.com, there's four different mm -hmm. options. One is news feed. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you well, when you go to Facebook.com, you log in. This is usually I, the first thing you see. Right. You're and this is Facebook. You know, deciding. Mm -hmm. We think this is the stuff you're going to like out of what all the people you follow. Um, are posting, right? Like they think I want to be into this video. A friend <coughs> and my cousin apparently have liked it, and then apparently it's about the, uh, I guess it's President Obama talking to the coach of the Penguins or something, right? right? Okay. But again, notice it's it's auto playing, right? right? And there was a one that uh, we saw before, hopefully that comes back because it was a fantastic example. Um, but the whole point is like people go in here and they're going through and they're checking in with their feed, and you know, what stops them? What catches your attention? Actually, you know, something like this will auto play. Well, this is called an auto feed. Um, this is this is called a news feed. News uh, feed. When the video pops up, we call that it pops up and starts playing without us t pressing play. Right. That's an auto play. Auto play. It's an auto playing video. Auto play video mm -hmm. on news feed. On the news feed on Facebook. Now, this is kind of a method that's happening in a lot of different places. Of course, a lot of people are on Facebook and where this happens, and a lot of people are also on Twitter. Now, Twitter, now new, the news feed when you're on Facebook, it's not just what people are posting. Just because I posted something right now on my page and you friended me doesn't mean you're going to see it, right? right. It's, it's using algorithms to say, I think you're going to like this thing, I think you're going to like this thing, and kind of spoon feed it to you. Whereas if you go to Twitter and, and, and you followed me and you followed the Pittsburgh Penguins and everything, if I tweeted something right now and you went to Twitter.com and saw all the people you follow, you'll see that in there. They're changing that a little bit, for the, but for the most part, I tweet something now, it's in there. If I tweeted something three hours ago, you're going to have to scroll down to see it or go to my profile and see all my posts or something like that, much like you probably see a friend's profile in, in Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. But again, I get this feed of all this stuff uh, from everybody that I follow, you know, whether that's 10 on people Twitter. on Twitter. Right. Um, and again, here's something with a, here's a video from, well, there's Twitter video showing a good example of something. And again, there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of words is a big thing on here. And I'll get into that for a second too. Instagram's another thing. Are you familiar with Instagram at all? Um, I know it exists. <laughs> well, it's connected with Facebook. So there's a lot of, I don't want to say similarities, but there's a lot yeah. of, just interconnectedness with it, but it's mostly a social network 
for uh, initially images. It used to be you could just post pictures, and it used to be you could only use it on your phone. And they've opened it up that we can at least view it on a web browser so we can see cats real big on the projector. Um, but they've also introduced video in this. Um, probably not a good example going through their web thing here, but if you go through on the app, once again, those videos will start to autoplay. Right? Again, trying to catch your attention with video. Um, we're at a really interesting spot here where, you know, between cell phones, between our Wi-Fi at home, there's a lot of bandwidth available, right? You know, depending on what plan you got and everything too, right? Mm -hmm. So now it's not a big deal for us to say, hey, we're going to give you a little bit of this video and not even, and without you even asking for it, right? It was kind of a little bit controversial when Facebook first started a couple of years ago. Um, so if I, if I could ask you a question. Yeah. How do you get an Instagram account? Uh, sign up just like you do Facebook. Actually, if you go to, you, uh, you would have to, I think you can do it through the web. If you go to Instagram.com, there will either be a sign up there, um, but most likely you can also download the Instagram app on your iPhone, okay. and that will be there too. Um, and when you go in there, you can actually set it up so when you post something on Instagram, it will also post to your Facebook. So now, right. you know, it's a good place for you to put your pictures, put your videos, and it'll also put stuff on Facebook. So now you're kind of talking to two communities at that point, you know. So for Instagram, I have to have the equivalent of friends. Right, right. You followers. followers. In, in, in that, it's followers and okay. following. Twitter is followers and following. Um, and, and, and of course, there's a following kind of component to Facebook. But yeah, it's mostly based on friends and yeah. page likes and, and things like that. And that's usually what populates your newsfeed. So, um, so when we're talking about that, you can put, uh, actually they just changed things on me. If you're on Instagram, they just changed a couple months ago that you can put uh, up to 60 second videos on there. It used to be 15 seconds, um, but now it's 60 seconds. You put a full minute of video on Instagram. And again, Instagram is a little bit kind of like a quick hit thing. Like, hey, here's a picture of something that's going on. Like, you know, this artwork like this, right? Or I like the, I like, you know, some people with their kids. Um, you know, events going on. This is actually it's cut and run. This is a studio that's right up the street here in Pittsburgh, uh, and some of the work that they're doing. You know, it's it's kind of just this visual kind of fun thing. And it's not it's not you know notice how simple it is versus Facebook <laughs> is everything right. Um, and you'll get you know and, and, and as usual, eventually if you're scrolling through, you'll get like a sponsored post or something like that. Um, but mostly it's like just fun imagery and, and every once in a while, it's not, it hasn't been real huge for video, but it is one place you can do that. Twitter, again, is really kind of picking up for video as well. Um, and, and again, if you, but for the most part, you know, it sounds like you're pretty much into uh, Facebook. You can put about any kind of video on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like you kind of have your group that you're kind of talking to when you're, when you're going to be posting your videos. Is that right? Um, well, I, I have about, I, I, this is just a, a guess, I have about 130 friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't post that much on Facebook uh, right now, but I do follow my cousins. So, um, you know, I'm, look, I'm looking to start taking videos and... Uh, Putting some issues up. I'll give you an example. You know, if the tomatoes grow in August and mm -hmm. I have plants full of tomatoes, I might go up and take a video and, and say we're 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 doing real well with our uh, tomato tomato mm -hmm. growth because, like in my age group, that's one of the big things: getting stuff out of the garden, your zucchini, the tomatoes, what have you. Mm -hmm. So I'd like I'd like to, I'd like to start doing that. So I'm assuming if you would take a video with iPad, or I probably use my I probably use my uh, uh, Canon. I just take out the uh, SD card, mm -hmm. put it into my uh, HP, and download the mm -hmm. stuff and have it there, and then work from that. You can you can absolutely. Right. Um, the, the nice thing is, really, like, you could do a lot of stuff just on your iPhone. Um, right. There's a lot of editors on, on, on the iPhone that you can use. iMovie, for instance, is very, very capable. 
And if you're taking it, so let's say you're, you're taking some video with your iPhone, um, and which is completely fine and served great video. I, I, I was taking video with this. This is an iPhone uh, a 6S. I have a 5S at home, which is like, what, three years old? Um, this, is, this is a 5. I have 5. I mean, that's, that, I still have 4S's around that I right. keep around because they take great video. Um, I, I've taken video from this, and even today I was drop boxing at the KDK. I was like, "Do you want my footage of the rally that I was at today?" You know, mm -hmm. um, or I'm taking time lapses and everything with the 5S at, at, at clients that I that I'm working with. You know, right. and, and you know, I and I have a three thousand dollar video camera, but it's like, well, I can put this here and it does a time lapse. You know, or the little things like these GoPros and stuff, but they serve a certain purpose, and and they do mm -hmm. very good video for what they are. So if you're already taking video with an iPhone. You can do a lot of stuff right there on that device without having to offload. And am I doing stuff right mm -hmm. on the Windows 10 and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. um, I, I would I would investigate iMovie. It it's, it's, should be free to download uh, with your iPhone. Okay, uh, In investigate iMovie. iMovie. And, and again, if you're just kind of taking a few clips together and putting them together, that's pretty good. Um, and act, and and. Uh, and then you know you can go straight into the Facebook app and you can upload videos from there. There's mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of instances where right I'll from your iPhone. right from your iPhone right in the Facebook app, um, and you're good to go at that point. The Facebook app on my iPhone. Right, right. There's a lot of times I'll do something. I was doing stuff with a client today that uh, we were taking. Uh, we we have well, we were using a different device, but um, it syncs with my phone. Brings in these like wonderful 360 degree photos. Mm -hmm. Facebook knows what to do with them, and we're just pulling it right onto my phone and pull it right up to Facebook, and right. and and not even touching a computer at that point. Right. Um, so, like I said, iMovie. Let me tell you, uh, the word on the, the program I'm thinking of is called Real Player. Real Player. Yeah. So it's more. This sounds like it's more of a media manager. Right. Right. And I, I remember. I remember. I remember Real Player. Yeah. <laughs> it's also kind of an order one. Right, so but they, they, they are updating and updating. Oh, they are. Good, yes. good, because I worry because right. I, I didn't know how, how up to date they had been. Right. Um, but this is this is what it looks like for, like, of course, with the iPad version, you're going to get a lot more room to do something. And it right. looks like a nice, big, complicated editor, but it really is, it steps you through it. And no, this is, uh, this is I iMovie. iMovie. And um, I'm also. Uh, did you what, did you discover this through Carnegie or through the Facebook or have, uh, the, this class? Uh, upstairs they have the flyers. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Right. So. Because um, I was going to put the notes on. Maybe I'll get your email and I'll send it to you right. after the class. But I have notes with the links to all, to this kind of stuff, uh, so you can investigate further. Um, another one that that you may consider is one called GoPro Quick. And I know, like it's GoPro, like these little cameras. Like, no, is this to put on your iPhone? This is for on your iPhone as well. Yes. Okay, that's GoPro. Now this one is nice, and and I'll I'll, I'll tell you why. We'll get to like why in a second. And that's an app. That that is an app for your phone. This is what I use when I want to pull together videos that I took with my phone and make a nice little. Um, Nice little video that catches people's eye. Like, you know, what did you notice? What did you notice about some of those videos that I showed that were auto playing that really kind of caught your attention? You mean the one about the wrestlers? Uh, about the wrestlers. There was a yeah, basket one, um, one that popped up. Like, like. Yeah, I didn't notice. I just noticed they were a video. Mm hmm. And you have. Well, if you um, have something like here, a good example is the Verge. Um, they are fantastic with their videos and catch my attention every time, of course, now I can't find one on their page, of course. Uh, now what, is, what is The Verge? Is the Verge is a technology um, news site. On Facebook? On, uh, well, they, have a, they do have a page on Facebook, but one of the big things with them, if you go and watch their videos, oh, I got audio on it. Sorry, I didn't know that connects. But you notice, they have a lot of text. If you start looking and find videos on Facebook, a lot of them have like whatever this guy's saying. Yeah. Because you gotta think when people are on, um, and again, it depends on what your target. If you're like, I want people to find and share this, and it pops up in right. people's news feeds, and they get interested and they follow along to what we're doing. 
Um, now, when you say text, do you mean the text that's in what? the phone? Question from the chat room. Are any of these Android friendly? Uh, the applications I'm talking about? GoPro Quick is. Go, GoPro Quick is available for Android. And, and I highly, highly recommend it. But I'm going to come around to that application in a second. So I'm on my phone. I'm, I'm I don't know, waiting for the train or something, right? right. And I see this, this video pop up, and it's like, oh, it's Superman. It's a roller coaster. I wonder what this is. You know, typically you would have to click it, and then it's audio, and it's playing on your phone, or you have to plug your headphones in, or it's bothering everybody at the train platform, right? right. Now I can sit here, view the video, see what they're saying, right. and I don't, it, it's an easier way for me to do this. Now you don't need, necessarily need to close caption your videos or anything like that. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of videos on here where it's all text. So we find a good one. I'll just buy a good one right here. So there's actually no talking throughout this in these, these right. videos. They're throwing just these titles say, hey, this is a 3D printer and it makes pizza. Here are some of the facts, you know. So when you're talking about gardening, like this is what like this is a this is a so and so garden and this is why this is important. And you throw a couple little tidbits in there. Also, it's about a minute video, you know. It's something that catches people's attention and then they're done with it. But when the person who's made this um, taking the video of that machine, are they typing the text in it and everything. The text in yeah, it? they're going in and they're 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 um, doing the text. They're doing. They're probably using like a Final Cut Pro or Adobe, uh, Adobe Premiere, like higher end, like you know, a couple hundred dollar software or, or subscription or whatever the case is yeah. these days. Um, and and I don't know if you're gonna want to get into that. Right. If you really really want to get into video, Adobe Premiere you can get for like a monthly subscription. Um, I don't know what it is for just Premiere. I want to say it's like twenty or thirty bucks just for that a month. But it used but it used to be like a thousand dollar software. So um, that's how they're doing a lot of these things. Now, what you can do on your phone with this uh, GoPro Quick, you can take those videos on your phone that you're taking. And here, I'll do. I'll go ahead and just create one from a little bit of stuff. So, so this is a rally I was at in. Um, uh, for a client here in uh, Westmoreland County, right? I can snag a couple of things here, and I'm just going to do a super quick example that I'm not going to take a lot of time with. Go in here, and again, it kind of does a little bit for you. It pulls the clips together, and they have a lot of themes here at the bottom, right? So let's pull in this guy, and you can start adding text and everything in here. This is all on GoPro Quick app. GoPro Quick app on iPhone or Android, for whoever's right. asking that out in the audience. You can add to this. Are those people out there are also participating in this session? What's that? Yeah, yeah, we're on, uh, we'll talk about Facebook. Okay. Post Facebook Live in a moment. I never spell Westmoreland right. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of text there and give you an idea. So right off the bat, this generates a thing that says, so you have text. Uh, we could add more. I gave a little bit at the beginning there. It says Rally in Westmoreland. It's got a it's got a bit going on. You can pick something. It can do something flashy like this with the video, you know, without you having to go in and make a title or anything like that. So if you're looking to do something that's a little flashier, um, I highly recommend play with this. See what works, you know. Uh, and again, you can go through here and say, uh, you know, add that text. Hey, is a Rally in Westmoreland. Um, you know, uh, do, 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 do. let's get, and you can, you know, I could drop in like with a couple of shots, facts about what happened today. And I could do this in like under 10 minutes if I'm really kind of tweaking at it and have a video ready to go. Like let's, and it kind of finds the best spots of the footage I took. And you can go in and edit it and, and fine tune it beyond what it's kind of automatically doing. So now, so for Go, Go, Go Pro Quick, is there like videos on YouTube that explain this? Probably, probably. Well, that's what I would need. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and then I could uh, try making some videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, once the video is made, it's on your computer. It's on. Well, once it's, it's made on, on here, I can yeah. save it. I can send it straight to Facebook right, right from the app. Right. So, 
um, or I can save it to my library, or I can, you know, I can save it to my library, send it to my computer over the iCloud, right. and you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. So, but again, it's it's kind of a it, rather than getting in there and tinkering and editing, you know, yeah. this will most likely be simpler for you than like say an iMovie. Like what? Like uh, like uh, the iMovie application. Oh, the iMovie. So it kind right. of depends on what you're doing. Right. Um, so I I recommend kind of trying both. Let me upgrade something random here. Uh, I recommend trying both of them, and I think you'll find um, certain things that you want to get across work better in one editor versus another. Um, but you know, you saw the videos that we're we're making here. You know, again, it's something nice, kind of shiny. You know. Little square, but that's that's fine for um, Facebook because if, if it's got that square look instead of that usual TV look to it, mm -hmm. it's going to take up more space in somebody's feed, and so it's going to fill more of their screen when they're scrolling through. And again, look you know look how flashy that is and everything versus here's the big professional one we were just looking at, you know, uh, it's a commercial now. Like that, somebody spent like a couple grand on this probably, right, uh, to get you know their. 10, 22,000 likes and whatever else uh, they did they did it with this video. Um, now The Verge is a giant you know multimedia company that's doing this. They're taking this video and they're putting it on YouTube, they're putting it on Twitter in some fashion and doing that kind of stuff. Um, but they're also you know very much like we're trying to get content for people to share that's very likable. Um, Right now, you're in the right place with, you know, it sounds like you want to be on Facebook with video and everything. Right. Facebook wants to do video. Facebook wants to compute with, an, with a YouTube. Um, and if you put video on your page, on your personal thing, on your group, um, and you put it on Facebook instead of putting it over on YouTube and linking it over like a lot of people have done for years, right. um, they'll see that. They will... That algorithm I told you about, they'll push that up in the algorithm. If some people start watching it, and and it's you know they're watching a lot of it because they can tell exactly how much of this video has been played through. They can tell if you turn the sound on. They can tell if you hit the whole the full screen button. And the more that somebody is doing that, watching this video, the more people it's going to show the video to in their newsfeed. So those are little little bits that kind of help you out there. And again, it's just kind of um, kind of the place to be if you're looking to expand at this point as far as videos go. Um, so again, going back to what kind of videos to put on there, the biggest thing, like I said, if you can put a little text, at least at the beginning of what is this video, you know. Of course, when you post something to Facebook, you're going to have you know, you have the caption and everything where you kind of explain it a little deeper, right? And, uh, you know, and, and, and tag other things, tag other people that are in the video so they, they know that they're in the video or, or, or something like, you know, if I can say I was at the, you know, Westmoreland Courthouse today, people searching for Westmoreland Courthouse rally will find my video. And that helps that get out there a little bit more. Um, you can put any video you have up if you think it works for the audience that you're serving, but generally go with shorter videos. You'll, you'll get more traction with it. Um, I've had some really interesting cases because I have um, video that we've been making for other platforms that we brought over to Facebook just to see what would happen. And we kind of hit a sweet spot that a lot of people are looking at it, but only like a small percent finish it because they're like 20 minute videos, hour long videos or more conversations than just like little nice edited videos, and we're doing those too, of course. Um, but, but generally, you'll have better luck if you have shorter videos. Um, let me double check if there's any um, tags. Well, I mentioned the tags. Um, when you're on Facebook, let me go back to Facebook, this is kind of a general Facebook tip when you're, um, when you're posting. So tagging on Facebook. Tagging on Facebook. Um, again, it gives a little more relevance because when you post a video, typically, um, I'm just going to grab a random video that's small so I can bring up the screen. Um, when, you, um, when you post a video, you're, 
and Google or whatever else doesn't know what's in the video, right? Mm -hmm. How does search engines work? They, work they, they read the words that are in a page and they index that. So it's really important, and this is across, across platforms, um, no matter what you're using. If you're using YouTube, it's the same thing. Um, you want to make sure you tag things. You want to make sure you're very descriptive with things. If you know, even Instagram and tweet, you want to make sure you know within the character bounds that they have, you're you're describing what is in the video for the most part. Um, you this could be remedied if you did captions, but I think at this level we're not making captions. I'm doing professional videos and we're not making headway to put captions in them yet. Um, it's a discussion we're having right now, especially with the way that it, it you know, because then if you, you, you have a script of everything that was said in that video, it's something they can search, right? Then mm -hmm. you don't have to worry so much about the description. So make sure gardening, obviously, you know, for, for one, the one thing we were talking about, making sure that's in there, what kind of gardening, um, anything that's special about what you're showing in the video. If you have anything specific things that you're like kind of put in text in the video, make sure that's also in the description as well. Um, two ways that you can kind of, in Facebook, make that a little bit of a weighted word. So, for instance, like this is a this is a site that I, I we've had a lot of success because we talk about pro wrestling. We talk about Monday Night Raw and John Cena and all those big guys on Monday Night, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a big audience out there that we're kind of addressing. You know, for you, you have your communities that you'd be addressing as well. So, you know, we're talking about. WWE. So I'll throw an at in front of, like, say, WWE, and we have some options. I know I want to tag this, and now you can't see it on the big screen, but that's blue now. So if you, um, if you, if you go to the post, you'll see that's kind of a blue text, and now it's clickable to WWE's official Facebook page. I can say, hey, we uh, talked about John Cena, who's a pretty big name with them, too. And these are guys that we're, again, telling them what exactly is in the video. From that, people are searching for WWE, John Cena. Apparently all over the world, from the way our stats look, <laughs> and, and we're doing very, very well with that. And a lot of people are looking at those videos. You know, how many are sticking around is another question, and you can look at the analytics for that. Analytics for that. But that's a lot of opportunity there, too. So again, like when you're talking about a gardening video, if there's um, some kind of gardening method, some kind of, uh, you know, something for you to use, and you know that they have a Facebook page, um, and not, you know, not tagging them just to kind of latch on to them, but like it actually is relevant to the video, I recommend doing this. So you put the tags to the video. No, if you put at WWE. Mm -hmm. What what is the significance of that? You hit enter and at so on a lot of platforms the at sign is a signal of a username. On some platforms like on Twitter, Instagram, if for instance, you know, my username on those is at Sorgatron. Like that's that's my identity on there, right? So if anybody wants to say, you know, hey, at Sorgatron, look at this. Hey, um, I'm, I'm hanging out with at Sorgatron in this picture. They simply need to type at Sorgatron, and and in that, they don't get a, 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 a drop down like this does. Mm -hmm. But again, you're able to use it the same way here, but instead of using a username, it actually signals looking up, hey, here's other pages and events that go with this name. So my company comes up when I type Sorgatron. Um, um, the, the coffee that we're having this Saturday comes up. Uh, you know, anything else with that title. Uh, some other events that in the past have come up, right? If I want to tag that. And again, it kind of gives, it interlinks kind of the purpose, right? Hey, this is a video from the open coffee that we did, you know. Then you're like, well, what was this event? You click through, you can find out information for the event. Or I can say, hey, this is a video from, uh, let's type in. There's the event that we posted for this class, for instance. So I'm saying, hey, here's a video or a picture uh, of us hanging out at the Carnegie Library at, at mm -hmm. Video for the Web, the, the, the boot camp class, right? And now that kind of interlocks that thing. 
and again, people can kind of track back, and it kind of gives it more weight. Now, if I look for these these PodCamp, if I search PodCamp Pittsburgh, even um, this can pop up as a video that's that's related to that as well. Um, so, it's also these video tags down here. For this is more this is more kind of a general thing. So, if you're putting your video, you put you know gardening, and it'll give you some general kind of topics in there as well. So I. I, I go ahead and let this autocomplete, and you can select through these, and we'll do gardening, garden for you, if, if this was one of your gardening videos, um, tomatoes, you know, and, you know, whatever else is in there. Again, you're just telling people what is in that visual thing, so so that search engine can interpret it, and again, it gives you a better chance of, of uh, that popping up for people. So. So again, big thing, make sure things are tagged, make sure, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you can, and again, understandably, not every video this is appropriate for, but if you can, getting text on the screen is a big, a big plus for getting people's attention on there. Um, I'll get to her videos when we talk about something else. Let me talk about YouTube for a second for you, because I think that's going to be more relevant to what's going on with you right now. And then I'll, I'll, I'll clean up with the live streaming and the uh, Snapchat stuff here. Um, what was your interest, just so I have context, but tell me again, what was your interest in putting stuff on YouTube? Like for sharing, more or less? Yeah, um, one example might be uh, I went in my family, when I first got married, I went from 8 millimeter film, mm -hmm. then I went out and bought a VHS recorder that looked like a bazooka. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, I put the 8, mil 8 millimeter film onto VHS tapes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I took all my VHS tapes, which were in boxes, mm -hmm. um, and I had those put on DVDs. Okay. Okay, then about three months ago, I downloaded software. I took all my DVDs and I put uh, the DVD and my DVD player on my, at the time it was my Dell, and with the software I converted that into, uh, I think it's a .mov mm -hmm. format, so mm -hmm. now it's, all these DVDs are on my computer uh, as videos, okay. What I want to do is I want to take some of those and take snippets out and along with the purchase of being able to make the, um, the digital format on my computer, it also gave me a uh, movie editing program which I haven't looked at yet. Mm -hmm. So I want to take little parts of those, so we're looking at maybe uh, 30 seconds to 90 seconds, Okay. and upload those to YouTube. Uh, okay. And that's actually exactly what YouTube is for at this point. Now, right. there is a lot of community there, is, but YouTube's really nice because you can put anything there. You know, right. uh, you're not looking to be the next iJustine or anything crazy like that with this or, 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 or build a community on there. You just want, like, it's a place to put video, basically. Right. That, and that right. sounds like that's exactly what you need. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, do you already have a Google account of some sort, Gmail, something like that? Um, you know, I'm not sure. Okay. I could probably check on it check on the computer. It. You might somewhere along the line. Uh, G Gmail. I would recommend uh, uh, if you have that, if it is, if you do have a Gmail email account or if there's any other Google property that you've signed up for at some point, it's probably best to, to use that to kind of keep your identity together instead of creating a whole other account over here because it can get messy, right. you know. Um, so you, if, if I'm going to work on YouTube, I should have a Gmail account. That would be a name and a password. If you sign up for YouTube, you'll end up with a Gmail account. Let's I, put it that way. So okay. I know I, I know I go to YouTube all the time. Right. Almost not a day goes by that I'm not on YouTube. Well, I see if there's a sign up button up in the corner, or do you see like like a picture or an icon of some sort up no, here? You know, no, no, do you see, see an upload button when you go? No. So I, that probably means I, I don't have Really, to in the long run, sign up for YouTube. There's an upload button. It's um, 
you can go to your software and you can edit things down to post them. Uh, but let me show you, show you and, 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 and maybe the editing software you're going to have is good that came with that, that program. Right. Maybe it isn't. Um, this is a little tip, and this is, this is something I wasn't going to present here, but I think it fits your, your, your case. Um, so two things, two things. When you hit the upload button, you're presented with a screen that looks like this. Actually, it's going to look a little bit different because for whatever reason, we don't have grays on this projector. Uh, there's actually a big arrow there that, that you can't see. Um, but you have a little drop down here. And it has public, unlisted, private, and scheduled, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's just concern ourselves with public and unlisted. So let's say you don't like that editing software that came with that. The beautiful thing is there's editing software in YouTube, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you have like two-hour videos, it might be a little bit of a problem. But if you have like kind of shorter, like maybe, I don't know, 20-minute, 30-minute videos, mm -hmm. you might be okay. Uh, but generally, uh, you can click this and select a video or drag and drop to this page and you're good to go and it'll go up here. Now if you're say you, you're having a bigger video that you want to edit down later and you don't want everybody to say it to see it just yet, I would just put that as unlisted. So that's going to give you two things. One, I can't search and find this video. It's it's invisible to right. everybody just on YouTube. But it also gives you a good link here right, of where that video is going to be live. If I give, say if you just have something you want to share with family, friends, a group, you can take that link. Anybody with that link can see it. So you can say, hey guys, here's a video, you know, I just want you guys to see it. Now, if somebody knew this random configuration of letters over here, they could figure it, they could, they could figure it out, I don't know. Okay. Um, but generally, it's pretty obfuscated from that. Not purely, purely private, but it's, it's not seen everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so this is public, unlisted, private, and what's yeah. the fourth one? Uh, scheduled. scheduled. So that's something like uh, I'm going to put out a video every Tuesday. You don't edit the video on Tuesday that you're putting out Tuesday. You edit it like the day before, a couple of days before, unless it's something I did this today. I want to get it out today, right. kind of thing. Um, so you schedule that for Tuesday at 8 a.m. Whatever that time you determine is. Uh, private. I don't like using private because it, it's weird how it authenticates the names and everything. I've had more problems with it over the years than not, so I just mm -hmm. go with unlisted whenever I'm kind of sharing kind of a preview of something. Um, YouTube's really good for kind of an archive place, and you can share it on Facebook. Um, if, it's, if it's something you just want to share with the group and say, hey guys, here's this, that's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, but if it's something that you want to put that out there and you really kind of want it to get out there on Facebook, maybe also upload it to Facebook, like natively, because in every case, anytime you link something that mimics something Facebook does, like video, you're going to kind of get dinged for it, and they're not going to show it to as many people. It's a game they play, right? Mm -hmm. Because in the long run, it's all about we want people to see certain kinds of content and make sure they're seeing that. So we can sell ads against that, or we can get people to buy, you know, to get in front of those people. I mean, you know, these are free services. That's where they make their money. So when you use it, you know, and that whole, that whole thing, right? Um, so yeah, so no, as far as like, I just want a place to put my videos, absolutely perfect. There are other things if you wanted to kind of get into or, or saw any opportunity to get into like the YouTube community. Um, they have a really good resource for that, and I'll have it linked in the notes as well, um, called YouTube Creator Academy, and that talks about like what the community is like on there. But again, I think it's a very, the way they present it, I think it's very youth-oriented, um, and I don't know, I, I haven't seen anything outside of that bubble that, that says like maybe the rest of us should participate in that bit. Like it seems like you have to you have to make videos for the YouTube audience rather than making videos for your audience and have them on YouTube. Like the rules are different, it seems. That's my experience with mm -hmm. what I've worked with on there, at least. So, but again, that is a resource for you to look into, see if there's, and there's really good tips in there about making videos, too, that you can get into. YouTube Creator Academy. Yeah, just search for that on, on Google or on YouTube itself, and it's, it's a whole channel in there, and as people, you know, you always hear about the YouTube stars that have like millions of uh, subscribers and now they're in movies and stuff, right? Um, it's those people presenting it. So, 
and actually one of them from Pittsburgh. Um, so that do you have any other questions about? Oh, we got something from the. How come you have the notes that go along? With the notes will be posted on the event pages on Meetup and Facebook, or you can contact me directly, uh, Sorgatron, on the tweeters or um, or contact page over at Sorgatron Media or on the PodCamp page. All those go to me. This is on Facebook. It's on the Facebook, so they're already on the PodCamp page. Yeah, I'll, um, and I'll actually probably post them. I'll probably post a link on that video there, too, um, after we're done. I haven't decided where to put the notes online, but it will be linked. So, um, Is that something I would have access to? Yeah, yeah, I want to get your email. I'll send it to okay. you. I'll send it to you. And I'll, I'll send you the Facebook page so you can get a heads up on, so on upcoming stuff as well. That's my, that's you. That's my um, Legion Post 156. Okay. And on the back, that's... Uh, oh, we got a QR code. Right. And that'll <laughs> get you to my Facebook uh, group. Awesome. I didn't. I didn't do that. Um, I have a couple of friends who are officers in my American Legion post, so we mm -hmm. kind of put it together, and he knew how to use software to make a QR code. So we put that on the back. I think I just posted a random video that isn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll just ignore that. Um, all right, so we talked about archiving stuff on YouTube. We talked about a little bit of what's. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, we talked a little bit about like kind of what works and doesn't on Facebook, and like I said, most of those tips, like the you know text on screen, um, things that get your attention. Uh, oh, one rule I didn't talk about when we're posting stuff on there on those kind of auto playing um, um, platforms: the first three seconds are really important. Like, notice if you're on Facebook, or I'm sorry, if you're on YouTube, and they have certain ads that you, they give you five seconds to skip, right? They really want to get your attention those first five seconds. Right. When so you, you can skip this in five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, in in Facebook, when you look at if, if you have a page, say, and you're looking at all the stats and everything, they give you two sets of stats. There's videos that have been seen less than three seconds, and then videos that have been seen over three or five seconds. I think it is. I can actually show right here what that looks like. Um, so that's kind of it's like. Oh, 10 seconds. 10 seconds is the big thing. We must have changed it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, 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 actually here. Um, so this number at the top is the number of times your video views, videos were viewed for three seconds or more, right? So had the, you know, if you're scrolling through that video audio plays, but you just kind of moved on, you didn't spend three seconds on that. It didn't catch your attention, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this, these stats go with each video. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's well, th this is collectively what's going on on my page. Collectively, in the last 30 days, there's been 20,000 views uh, of, of videos on that page. But if you look at the real number, like if I was going to advertisers or something like that, mm -hmm. 10 second views. Notice how much lower that number is. <laughs> 7,625. So that's how many people have actually actually stuck it stuck around. Um, and, and also, they do have a qualification. So, like, say if you put up a 10-second video, like, say it's an advertisement or something like that. Hey, check this out. And then you have, a, you know, it has to be at least, you know, 97% of that, that video is is viewed. Um, so again, this kind of shows like that importance for attention, right? Um, those first few seconds, you know, needs to get them in the door. It needs them to stick around, right? So, um, so it kind of gives you an idea of like what they're looking for. So. If you're looking to kind of outreach a little bit, for, like don't start with, I have a friend who's been doing these live videos that we're gonna talk about in a second. And I make fun of her a little bit for this one that she did. So uh, they work for the Scare House, the haunted house out in Aetna. And they did, I think it's this one. Uh, yeah, the first like few seconds that kept auto playing on my feed is like the her chin. Right, because that's where the video started, and I'm just like, that's not like you should start on a zombie or something, right? Like that kind of gets people attention when they're scrolling through, you know, like that. That would be great. Uh, and then we and we talked about this a lot, uh, but of course they're not doing too shabby with like 2,000 views on this one, <laughs> uh, but still. Um, 
So they're getting 2,000 views, and she could go on to her computer and tell how many people watch this video for four seconds, five seconds. Right, right, exactly. Okay. Now, this is a page that has um, some 70,000 people that like it. So there's a lot of people that will right. just get it in their feed because it's a, a proven popular page, right? Scare, the scare house. The scare house, yeah. I mean, they've, they've, they're, I mean, this, this is Elijah Wood on, on one of the late shows talking about their scare house and, and the, the, their haunted house and everything. And they, they do a lot to kind of stay in, um, stay in, in the conversation for the rest of the year as well, like going to the Pride Parade, going to the Kennywood thing, you know, uh, you know, getting involved with other events throughout the year, charity work, you know, all kinds of things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's part of their, their strategy. So, so what you saw there, actually, this is Facebook Live. And this is a live streaming side. And again, I, I don't know how much it's going to offend you what you're doing. Maybe you'll, you'll kind of get some ideas out of it. Again, this is just something you can do. Let me pick a different one. <laughs> that also starts with Is there going to be an edited replay available? Of this? Mm -hmm. Um, not planning on it. It's just going to be whatever we did on our Facebook Live. I do, I, I do have a GoPro going over here. I'm going to see how it turns out. <laughs> I mean, we'll post that. I don't know. So the answer to that is maybe. Keep maybe. it on Facebook. Or... Not likely. Not, not likely. likely. But, okay. um, we're, this is us experimenting with Facebook Live. That, that's what's happening right now. This is broadcasting to Facebook. They can go to Facebook.com. Maybe it popped up in their news feed. Um, it's on the PodCamp Pittsburgh site. And uh, our, oh, I'm sorry, PodCamp Pittsburgh uh, Facebook page, and I've done live streams where I'm dragging in a lot of equipment. You know, we have like you know big cameras and everything. And here's to, to show you what, what this we're talking one. about here, we've got the Facebook Live, mm -hmm. and it's telling you we've live, we're live. We've been live for 44 minutes and 36 seconds and counting. We currently have four viewers, mm -hmm. and this tells me that my friend Nathaniel joined the. Uh, the video feed at some point, and then this Paul Euler is the gentleman that's asking the questions that I keep interrupting to, to ask, because he's part of the live audience, and they're asking the questions because they want to know what's going on. Right. So, yeah, actually, that's the feed. That's us in this room right here. Hey, give you an idea. And this is what they see. So, and again, it, it shows it's live. It, you know, if you have a pretty good audience, you know, you know, a lot of them will get that notification. Or people that follow you personally on Facebook, you just use it through your own side of things. Um, but it's something to investigate. Um, as far as how do we do that, uh, it's again very iPhone based here, right? Uh, so let me get me out of my notes. When you go to Facebook, and do you you say you're currently managing a Facebook page? No, my, my you page. are. And are you aware of the, the Facebook Pages app on the iPhone to manage that? Um, now, when you're talking about your page, are you talking about for my, my news, your my, personal for you? My, right, my okay. per personal. So, either way, whether it be in Facebook Pages, so like here's one for like, you know, or let's say, let's go to PodCamp since that's what we're at right now. Um, what you'll want to do is go to not video, not 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 video, not photo. I know it's kind of weird since we're going to be doing video, but you go to the publish button here, and at the bottom, the format's going to be different sometimes depending on what what you're on, and you can barely see right there, or maybe you can see it on your own phone. There's a little guy with a little kind of halo tool, right? Like a couple little halos tool. That is the that is their icon for Facebook Live. If you click on that, you just give a description for what that video is, it starts connecting, and uh, once that's done figuring out where it is and it's connecting, that's giving, it's giving me some problems, and <laughs> and I'm getting messages, apparently my the footage I showed you made it to KDK News tonight, um, but, uh, but, but generally, if the connection was okay, oh there, we got a go live button. I want to. We're going to actually do this. I want to show you exactly how this process goes. This is a test, and at and remember I told you about tagging things. I'm going to type Carnegie. It's going to come up. Library. Yes. This one. There you there go. You Pittsburgh. 
And now, whoever's managing social media for Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh can check out in three seconds, two, one, exactly what's going on in the Carnegie Library of Beachview live right now, even though it looks like I'm having some connection problems over here still. I, oh, you know, I didn't put this phone on Wi-Fi, so oh, okay. I, I'm on well, cell. I'm on the Wi-Fi. You're having some issues. Um, but generally, when this is working, and you got good connection, uh, you also, like, people can, can comment. It looks like a regular comment on Facebook to them. It'll pop up in here as, as comments as well. And then your video's ended. It's going to wrap things up there. Boom, check mark, and, and, and the, usually it does something else after this. <laughs> well, this, is, this is through Google. This is Facebook. That was Facebook. Facebook. This is Facebook. This is Facebook themselves. Um, Google and YouTube have some things like this, but they're not as accessible. I'm not going to talk about them today. Right. Um, but if you wanted to explore something called Google Hangouts or YouTube Live. But this is, this is uh, through uh, Facebook. Facebook, and it's called Facebook Live, Facebook. as opposed to general Facebook videos, right? And now we're having a wonderful um, um, echo effect going on our page right now. So <laughs> we'll cut that out. And again, now, like, say if you're at an event like that rally today, we could have Facebook live it, right, uh, for the entire hour. It's on there. You can see exactly what was being said. You're good to go. You can comment as it's happening. Again, think of you can kind of be a live news presenter as right. something is happening. Hey, I'm downtown. This crazy wreck happened. Check it out, you know, or, mm -hmm. or, or something like that. This is something that's been coming up for a while in a lot of ways. Um, this actually is something that isn't that 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 old either. Um, streaming video actually kind of popped up about a year ago in about March of last year with an app called Meerkat. Um, they kind of came out of left field and the idea with them is that they were doing video that was live now, not being saved anywhere, a very ephemeral, you know, like if you didn't see me doing this thing now, you're not going to catch it, which gives you a reason to kind of go back and, and follow somebody yeah. and get the notification on your phone. So that, that was done locally. Meerkat is a local production. The people who thought this up. No, no, this is not in the area. No, no, no. no. I don't know where these guys were. That sounds familiar. And I think they, they were, were around a lot last year. They were big news. They kind yeah. of settled out because the problem was that uh, there was a, a thing called Periscope that Twitter purchased, I think. And they put something out. This is the one you typically hear about. It's Periscope. Um, and that's where they kind of became pretty popular. You know, Snoop Dogg and the WWE and, and all the big names and celebrities were doing this. And it's like, hey, we're backstage at the concert. Hey, here's this crowd out here. And again, live streaming from your phone over all that bandwidth we were talking about. Um, much like in the same fashion of what Facebook is doing. Now, Facebook doing live, I think is more significant. I think, in my opinion, is more significant. Again, you're not on Twitter. You're not, you don't have to go figure out what Periscope is and figure out how, for people, how, how people can follow you over there, right? You already have an audience on Facebook, right? Um, so now you can do all those things and not have to go anywhere else and bring video, live video, to the people that already follow you there. Can you save Facebook Live videos for repurposing like you can do on Blab or Periscope? Not officially, but there are, um, there are definitely applications. If you look for Facebook Live download, whether it be extensions or websites, um, they'll, they'll snag the video for you. Um, it doesn't look like it's too hard to do. So you, you can snag that. Oh, also, I do believe when you do a Facebook Live, yes, there's a little trigger here on, on your phone. If you click that, it'll save that video you just did to your iPhone. So you will have that video on your iPhone or Android device, and you can take that, and you can take that in your editor, or iMovie, or GoPro uh, quick, and you can chop that video up. So again, what, what were we talking about? The shorter videos are the ones that get more attention. Um, live videos also get more attention, uh, a, lot, a lot of attention because they're live. They see the live thing. This is happening right now. That's interesting to you, and hopefully, you're doing something on there that is interesting to your audience. Well, and the other thing that's nice about the live videos is we're actually interacting with exactly. viewers right now. Exactly. And that's that's something that I like is that idea that, you know, something's happening right now, you're getting feedback. Maybe you maybe you want to schedule, say, hey guys, I'm gonna do a QA about this topic. 
about gardening, about you know something something with your group, you know, um, that you think they'd be into. We're going to do this at three o'clock on, on Saturday or something, right? And everybody can show up, you know, appointment for that thing, and they can they can respond. You can have a conversation with them, or maybe maybe you're going to interview somebody that fits into that topic, kind of. And you're like, we're going to just have a conversation or something, and then you can take questions if you talk to your audience, say, hey, this is going to happen then. And if they missed you or they didn't see the notification, um, you can take that. It's still there for people to check out. Or you can have it downloaded to your phone. You can take that, put it in one of those applications, say, oh, it's really good when we talk about this topic. Snag that bit, put it out as another video. Repurpose that content. Um, definitely, definitely. So whenever you go and you're going to use Facebook Live, you have to have told the people in your friends group that you're going to be doing that so that they'll be have Facebook open. Mm -hmm. Well, there's two. There's a couple things that can happen. You can, I think doing that and advertising, hey, this is a thing that's going to happen, like we said in the event, yes, this is going to be Facebook Live, and obviously some people have shown up for it, right? Mm -hmm. We told them, hey, go to our Facebook page and look out for the live thing. Um, and depending on how things are set up and how things are subscribed and how my settings are, when you follow PodCamp Pittsburgh, when you follow me, um, you should get a notifications, or you can select to subscribe to notifications. I think, let me see if they have them on here. Yes, I generally get a notification when you go live with this stuff. You do? Yeah. Okay. So I only have one account that I, I get the notifications for, so I've only, I've only seen it a lot through this one. Let me see if he, he posts it. Oh, yeah, you see a lot. Yeah, I see a lot for this guy because he does this like every day. But every time he goes live, and a lot of times he's recording something professionally, and there's just a guy in the corner doing the behind the scenes of what's going on so he can interact live with them, right? Mm -hmm. um, I get a notification on my phone if I have, like for instance, I have notifications on, on my Mac, right? I'll get a notification right here that'll pop up in the corner. If you have Facebook connected to your Windows 10 computer, you'll get a notification there. If you, like, you generally get notifications from Facebook, it should pop up there as well. So... Again, if you're kind of scheduling something big and want to make sure, like especially like in certain cases, I don't feel like my, my audience is big enough to that everybody will get the notification and enough people will care to show up. So in that case, I want, want to say, hey guys, this is a thing. Maybe you want to clear your schedule for this and, and kind of you know funnel them towards, hey, this thing is happening. Um, it's nice everybody gets a notification. But if you, again, if you're doing something on a grander scale, like, hey, this was a scheduled thing we're doing right now, right? Because um, we've done some pretty big streaming productions that nobody told them we were doing, and we get five people watching. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and this is and this is all that equipment that we drag onto the scene and do a YouTube live thing, right? Um, so again, a little bit of that kind of heads up, I think, is very helpful for something like that. So, so we talk about so when live. people follow you, whether they follow you on. Facebook? Uh, me in general? Yeah. You said people following you and then you let them know that... Mm -hmm. okay. Well, for me, well, for me, um, I, I'm kind of in a lot of places because I'm always experimenting. Right. So when I, you know, depending on what it is, if I'm like, hey, this event is coming up, like for instance, for tonight's event you know, or, or anything else we're doing for PodCamp, I, I tell them on Twitter, on Instagram, if it makes sense, if I can come up with a cool image that can talk about it. Um, on my uh, my podcast, on on a bunch of other things, you know, and um, and that informs people showing up there or here in the long run, right? Here, I think more just the local people are getting the flatters, obviously, you right. know, uh, especially the construction probably scaring some people away, but people can sit at home and watch it, so so it's nice that we have that option here. Um, so and so for you, it's where your audience is. If your audience is in this Facebook group, then that's where you talk to your audience. You know, right. uh, if you if you find other similar Facebook groups, or maybe you find a user group over on some other social network that you find is very popular, right? Like talking about podcasting and photography is really popular on Google Plus. Google Plus is not really an up and coming social network anymore, but there's some good conversations happening. Don't tell me the Google person's in there again. Because every time I talk about Google Plus, there's a Google person in the room, <laughs> um, you know. But but you know, and it's nice to go to there, say, hey, I'm into this stuff too. We have a great group over here. Don't be real spammy. Just be part of the group, 
you know, say, I'm doing this thing over here on Facebook. If you guys want to follow this group, if you're interested, follow this page, whatever the case may be, and maybe you guys can join me for this and you, you guys will be into it. You know, you kind of got to do a little bit of the footwork. It's, uh, it's kind of like going and flowering. Like, I really want people to come to my, 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 my concert. I've got to flyer the neighborhood and, and let people know because those are the people that are going to come to it, right? Um, and, uh, you know, you kind of do that digital flyering a little bit, too across all those networks, and again, where those people are. I'm not going to advertise a wrestling show at a church, necessarily. Right? Right. So. Now you mentioned something about uh, meetup groups. Do you have a meetup group? We do. And how often does that mean? Uh, well, it's kind of where we put like these events, and we have um, a, a panel event that we're doing called a, a, An Evening with Pod Camp. It's going to actually be over in Allentown uh, at that work hard. Um, and, and we're talking about, so we did one on podcasting, we're going to do one on social media and politics, actually, next week. Um, mm -hmm. It also has um, stuff that's not a podcast, it's kind of a general kind of podcasting social media Pittsburgh one. So if I went to, if I went to meet up and put in, you know, within five miles and put your name Sorgatron, mm -hmm. that it, would take me to your meetup. That should come up, yeah, or just podcasting or po Pittsburgh, podcast Pittsburgh or anything like that. And we usually cross post. We'll post the things on meetup. We'll also post them on Facebook. Yep. We'll also post them on Twitter. Podcast Pittsburgh. Podcast Pod Pittsburgh. Pod Camp Pittsburgh. Good. Pod Camp. Pod Camp Pittsburgh. All right, we got a few minutes. Do you care to know what Snapchat is? <laughs> yeah, if you. Uh... All right. Snapchat. This is where we throw out a lot of the rules that we just talked about. Okay. okay let me, let me get to no problem. Way. I'll let you get you caught up there. How long does a Facebook video go? Ninety minutes. Okay. Um, that has been a problem with us because, and this is kind of an advanced tactic, but um, we do. So I do podcast recording, and we do them a lot. Um, where we we do about three shows on Tuesday nights, and we're live on YouTube for it. We can also link into Facebook Live in a certain kind of funny way with my nice hardware, right? Mm -hmm. um, problem is, we just kind of sit there on the stream for about five or six hours and do the shows, right? I can't do that on Facebook because <laughs> it's a 90 minute limit. Um, I think as with everything, anytime you see a limit like that, it'll get lifted. Twitter just lifted their 30 second limit on video like this morning I was listening about it. Instagram lifted from 15 to 60 seconds. I think even Vine, I'm not going to get into Vine, Vine's another video platform on Twitter. Um, they let, they were seven second videos, right? Mm -hmm. That's all you could do with seven second videos. So love the attention span on that, right? Um, they just lifted, I think, to like maybe 12 seconds or something like that. I, I, I can't remember. Um, but uh, no, I think anytime you see something like that, like with the Facebook Live, I think you'll, you'll see that lift as well. Here's another funny. 360 video on uh, on uh, Facebook is uh, 10 seconds or 10 minutes max, which kind of makes sense. Who wants to sit in a 360 video for or VR helmet for more than that? So, Chachi, Chachi, Chachi yeah, <laughs> you gave me a message about VR during the session actually. Um, Snapchat. Let's talk about the Snapchat. So thankfully, there's some tools we just talked about last night on the podcast that may actually help people with Snapchat, <laughs> which is kind of cool. So Snapchat is kind of a curious beast, um, as in you kind of, like you just start off on the screen, and there's Missy. You just start, start right off on the screen, right? And you don't really get much more information. Um, you know. Not to get too deep into it, swipe down, okay, there's stuff about me, my account, my friends, somebody added me, stuff like that, right? Um, you remember your QR code on the back of your uh, card? Right. See that image right now with my face? I need to fix that. I kind of screwed that up. Um, but that, you see all the dots and everything like that around that icon? Right. That's, a, that's like a QR code. So if I'm here in Snapchat and I see that code, like, if you notice, if you follow Twitter, Facebook, like, the Post Gazette, that is their icon on Twitter, is that image for them. So I'll follow them on Snapchat. 
Oh no, I bumped the cord. I bumped the cord, that's what happened. It'll come back in a second. It's a little glitchy tonight, sorry. We'll bring that back. So, so you're saying that because, you know, you can kind of look for people um, pretty easily on, um, on Facebook, for instance, on Twitter. You can search in somebody's name and, and find them. There's not a really good mechanism to do that here. There's basically, they look for, you can, if you know a username, you can look for it, but you can't just search people you don't follow, right? Like, as, as easily. It, it, it's, you know, there's not a lot of discovery here. So, generally it started as something like this. Like, you know, I have my friend here, and I can send a Snapchat directly to them. I want to send it to, uh, 